Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the principles of microscopy, magnification and resolution, the light microscope, laser scanning microscopes, and then we'll finish with a summary. So we need to understand how microscopy actually works before we delve into how the microscopes work as machines. So when we're looking at particular structures with the human eye, just as they are, we can only distinguish things that are about 0.1 millimeters apart. This is just about the size of a human egg cell. So by end to end, a human egg cell is about 0.1 millimeters or a tenth of a millimeter but the problem with this is that most things that we want to study in biology the problem with this is that biologists want to study things which are much smaller than the egg cell like bacteria and red blood cells otherwise we wouldn't get far in understanding biology very much at all for example eukaryotic cells tend to be roughly 1 to 20 micrometers in size bacterial cells are often 0.1 micrometers in size up to about 5 so they can be really small and the eyes are limited because they don't have enough magnification or resolution, which are two terms that we'll go into more detail about in the next slide. So to observe biology, we have to increase our maximum magnification and resolution. And in order to do this, we use microscopes. So in order to understand how microscopes work, we need to be familiar with two terms, which are magnification and resolution. So our eyes don't have strong enough of either of these. So the microscopes have to have enough magnification and resolution to do this and different types of microscope have different levels of each. So with increased magnification and resolution, we can see pictures become clearer, and we can also see more detail in smaller structures. So magnification is basically describing how many times bigger something looks when we put it under a microscope. So how much bigger the image is than the real thing when we've put it into the microscope. So for example, say this was our specimen and we call it a cell or something. So to the eye, it's too small to see. So what we do is we use a lens, which is a curved glass object which can magnify the specimen to look like a large image. So essentially the specimen, the light goes through the specimen, is passed through the lens, and a large image is made on the other side. So this is what we would see, and this is our image. So the image is bigger than the specimen actually is in real life. And that's the magnification, how much bigger it is than the real thing. And the more powerful the microscope is, the greater its magnification. So if we had that specimen again here in the middle, if we pass it through this lens, then we end up with a particular image size, which corresponds to this. If we use a slightly more powerful microscope, and we pass the specimen through a lens again, then we end up with an image which is greater. And with a larger image, we can see more detail than with a smaller image. And this means that the lens is more powerful. And this means that the magnification is greater. But magnification is not the same as resolution. Resolution and magnification are completely different things. So the resolution is something that describes how much detail we can see, how much fine detail we can see in an image. So something with a greater resolution looks sharper and more detailed in its finer structures than this one. So this has less resolution and this one has more. And you'll notice this is quite similar to a TV. Clearer, sharper TVs with a lot higher definition have more resolution than those that look a bit less clear. And the way that we define resolution is that it's the smallest distance that two objects can be apart, still appearing as two objects. So you could look down a microscope and see an object that looks like a big blob with two sides to it. So it looks like one object. And the resolution isn't that great because in real life, they're two separate things, but we see them as being one combined object. If we go down and increase the resolution, so getting a more powerful microscope, then this means that the objects become clearer in being two separate objects as they really are in real life. So it's almost as if you imagine having very bad eyesight and seeing objects around the room, things start blurring into each other because your resolution isn't as good. When you sharpen the vision or you put glasses or lenses in, you realize they're actually separate objects and therefore your resolution has gone up. So greater resolution is better because when we look into the cytoplasm of a cell, for example, we might see one blob with a poor microscope, but if we increase the resolution, we might see that it's actually two ribosomes or something. So it gives us a lot more detail. So to summarize the difference between magnification and resolution, magnification is how many times larger an image appears compared to the real thing. And the resolution is the smallest distance between two distinguishable points. 
and once they become one point you've gone past the resolution's limit. So let's talk about the light microscope as a piece of equipment. They were the first ones to be designed and they're still the most common ones that are used compared to other types of microscope. Basically we use light coming from a light source at the bottom of the microscope and we pass it through the specimen which has been put onto a glass slide. The image of this goes through and then it gets magnified again into our eyes. So this is kind of a simplified diagram of what's happening. We have a light source sending light through the specimen and eventually it will be magnified by various lenses until we see it in our eyes. So we see the specimen being bigger than it really is in real life. And usually looking on a light microscope, this will be the light source. This would be where we would place our specimen. And we look down the microscope into these eyepieces to see the light coming through. And the light magnifies it into a large image for us. So the reason they're the most common type of microscope are because of several reasons. First of all, they're relatively cheap. They're cheap to build and they're cheap to buy, and therefore they're very accessible. They're also easy to use. They take a few lessons to get used to, but then once you've learned them, even young kids can use them. And they can also be used to study living tissues or cells. Some microscopes have to kill the cells before they can view them, but in the light microscope case, if you've prepared a specimen quite recently, that cell might still be alive. And so we can see it actually performing processes in real time. The light microscopes show us a 2D image of the living cells. So obviously you have to remember that cells aren't just squares or circles on a piece of paper. They're 3D objects, often in the shape of 3D shapes like polygons or cubes. So you have to be aware that this is just taking a slice through a 3D network. And the way they work is because we said they had a light source, they use visible light in the spectrum to create an image. The human eye can only see visible light, which is a particular range of wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum. If we used other types of radiation, we would never see it. And because they use visible light, their resolution is limited to about 200 nanometers and their magnification to about times 2000. So what does this mean in terms of the definitions we just talked about? A resolution of 200 nanometers means that if we were to look at two objects in a distance of 200 nanometers, we'd be able to tell that they were apart. If we look down any smaller, like 100 nanometers, we wouldn't be able to tell that they were two objects. It would look like one blurred object. Magnification of times 2000 simply means that the specimen compared to the image is 2000 times smaller. So the image is 2000 times bigger than the real thing. Another type of microscope is known as a laser scanning microscope. They use a high power beam or a laser of light to create an image for our eyes. So this is the beam coming out of the machine here. The laser passes over each single point of the specimen. So it takes quite a while and it creates an image over time. So essentially the laser is pointed at this specific point and then the next point and then the next point and the next point and overall it does a whole route across the whole cell and it beams the light on and receives it back again. And over time it forms a nice 3D image. So these are more expensive than light microscopes because of the laser but they do have a very very high resolution. And they can also show specimens in three dimensions which is very good for understanding how things work and how smaller pieces of life can function. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.